So we are starting a new soap series for another summer line that probably will not be released until later on in the summer. And we are doing lavender. Uh, but before you just bounce because you're bored with lavender, uh, these are actually really cool blends because I too usually don't like lavender just across the board. But for this one, I'm actually using some Suds Are Recommended fragrances that I've never played with, but are very cool blends. And so we're working with like black amber and lavender or cedar and la lots of cool blends from a lot of cool companies. And so today we are going to do unexpected things with a, a soap that is scented with a lavender because I found all of these scents to be very unexpected. So we're going to play around with some cool designs as well. I uh, will tell you more about all of this in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 281 of 365 days of soap. And today, as I said, we are starting the summer lavender line. And the first one that we're messing with, I think, is the black amber and lavender from, I always forget their name. It's not gonna come to me. I will show it to you in the video though, so you'll make sure to see the bottle. And we can also, I can grouse a little bit about how I always forget the name of this fragrance company. And it's very strange to me that I can't keep them in my head, but yes. And again, because these blends were so interesting and not what you would expect a lavender to smell like, I decided to play around with all the rest of the soap. So we're doing very interesting colors. We will be using Mad Micas throughout all of this for the colors, but the color patterns themselves, the schemes, are going to be weird. And we will be doing kind of an interesting three color pour for all four of these bars in kind of different ways to see if we can get a cool laminated effect in the soap. So kind of like a wood grain, but not at all like a wood grain because I'm not doing wood grain soaps yet because it's summer and I don't typically do those until fall. So we are going to be having a very cool adventure, I think with all four of these soaps for this particular line and fingers crossed that they all end up looking decent because you know, I, I want to sell them. So let's go to the video and see, you know, how, what I did with the first one. Midwest Fragrance Company. That's the fragrance company. And we will be using black amber and lavender for this. And we are using three colors from Mad Micas. Not colors you would expect in a lavender soap, but here's the thing. This does not smell lavender-y to me. I mean, it does have some of the clean kind of lavender notes to it, but it's also very sultry. It's also very fun. And so I wanted to do something fun with the colors as well. So the colors that we are using is uh, wow, Strawberry Moonshine for the pinky red and Sexy Stranger on a Train for the brown and Aphrodite for the blue, all from Mad Micas. Again, using Midwest Fragrances, uh, you know, scent. And I actually picked up this black lavender or this black amber and lavender scent because it was recommended by Sudzers. And so I did that thing thing. The oil blend for this is my new Lots of Lather blend actually, which does include some shea butter for the summer months. 
and the pour itself will be interesting. Now I have dispersed all of the kaolin clay for the batch into the batter before I, you know, section everything out to color it. This is all we're doing for this. This will be a three color blend, no white whatsoever, and they are all going to be equal parts of these colors. And kind of what I wanted to do was create sort of like a laminated effect, uh, sort of like a wood grain, but not specifically a wood grain pour because it's summertime and I don't do those in the summertime. I typically do those in the fall. So I am going to try, I think with all of these kind of different methods for achieving some lamination just to see what each of them do. I will be cutting all of these bars for the lavender line the exact same way. So the standard way that you would cut a loaf of soap top down, right? And so into one inch increments. And so for this first pour, I think I decided that I wanted to, those are very pretty colors. Look at all that. For the first pour, I decided that I wanted to do an in the pot uh, sort of faux funnel and then pour that whole pot, so the big Pyrex, into the mold just at one place to see how much lamination and how many, you know, how what kind of differences we get with the pour. So that's what we will be doing with this. Now everything's going to be split for the scent, split a quart, you know, evenly between the three. And then I will pour all of these with the same count if memory serves for each color. Two, three. All right. So maybe that was three. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay. So it looks like a four count. We're going to do a four count for each of these and layer it directly in the middle. Now, a better way to actually do this if you're doing a faux funnel within your pot is to use, just to ensure that you always have a steady hand and you're pouring in the exact same place, is to turn that Pyrex around or whatever it is that you're using to, you know, make the actual pour and use the spout part of it. So essentially you lay your container on the spout and so you know that it's always going into the same place. I didn't do that for that because it actually weirdly confuses me if the handle of my Pyrex is not right next to my body. So I didn't, I didn't do that. But if you're okay with handles being opposite you while you're pouring, it's a good way to make sure that you always have your pours right in the middle. So there's that. Now, as you can see, I think this batter is actually a little bit too thin for this because the colors are really already getting muddy. We're not getting the cool rings that you would see. Well, again, I keep saying it's not a wood grain, but if you cut a tree and saw, you know, we're not getting those rings. The batter's too thin for this. And so I will be interested to see what this ultimately ends up doing in the cut. But for the pour itself, we already know that we're working with, we're going to be working with very muddy batter because that's what we can see as we're putting it into the the Pyrex, like in creating the in the pot swirl. Probably should have mixed up my pour, but I didn't. Actually, I don't really know if I should have mixed up the pour in this. I think my best bet probably was still to do this because as you can see, again, those colors are so muddy already. If I had decided to, instead of just picking one point and pouring from there, in this case, it's the end, and just instead, you know, went back and forth across the length of the mold, I would have ended up with muddier colors. So I don't know. Um, probably this was the, was the better way to do it. I'm not sure, but it's going to be an interesting cut for sure. Based on the look of that, it looks like we're just going to get sort of a just brown bar of soap throughout. And I did cut out the part where I just got the rest of the soap batter into the top, just on the top. And I'm just skewering just the first little bit of it to have a decorative top and it will be put in the oven for C pop and gel. And let's go check out this cut and see what we're working with inside of this. Okay. And day two on to the cut. And as you can see, we did get some extra heat going on in there. We've got some cracking on the top, 
little bit of cracking on the side, but I'm not mad at it for sure. I do like that the uh, kaolin didn't properly disperse throughout the batch. So there's some little chunks. It actually adds some cool interest for me. I enjoy that. Let's see what we are working with here. That's actually a pretty cool bar of soap and not at all what I expected uh, given how muddy. Now that's cute. Uh, given how muddy the actual colors were. So I'm wondering what the rest of the colors, what the rest of the bars are going to look like. Because that might have been the side that I poured that was last, right? That, that I was pouring at. And you did see about halfway through that pour that you started getting more defined layers between the colors. That's interesting. There's some cool feathering going on there. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's, I, I mean, as far as bars of soap go, it's cool. There's some visual interest there. That's not bad. Smell is great. Uh, that black amber and lavender lasted through sponification really well, as does all of Midwest fragrances, uh, scents to my knowledge. I've had none problems with them, but I do find this all very fascinating. We haven't actually seen a muddy bar of soap where essentially it's just brown and I was quite certain that that's what we were going to get but that's not what is being revealed here and we are getting toward the other side of the loaf again I don't know which side is which yet I'm almost thinking that the side that we're getting closer to was the side that I was pouring on I have no idea point is we're we're experiencing the actual difference in colors. Well, we got some muddiness there. Very fascinating. Uh, you know, I, this isn't exactly what I was going for with all of this, but also I don't hate it. It's, uh, again, it smells nice. It has some good vi visual interest to it. And that's sometimes all that matters. And so, you know, if you're into bars of soap that look like this, hey, that's how you do it. Make sure your batter is way too thin to actually properly do a full funnel and, you know, pour it. But I don't know. I think they're fun. That's definitely an interesting pour. And um, that's day 281, the first of the Lavender Summer Soap Lines. And there it is, the first in the four bar series of the Lavender Bars. And, you know, I... I don't, I'm not super happy with this particular design. And I knew that as I was pouring it, like, oh, there's gonna, the colors are too muddy. So there's not gonna be the nice lamination. That said, the bars are still absolutely beautiful in their own way, just not exactly what I was planning on. And you know, that's fine too. The scent, amazing, amazing. So strong, so beautiful so lovely didn't really have any problems with it with the pour so yeah it's a winner and again it's an unexpected twist on a lavender for sure so i if you're interested in lavender plus something cooler uh pick this one up it's very cool if you're interested in seeing what other scents i test and how this weird pour and these weird color schemes and all the things go you know subscribe and then you'll get notified for those of you who have subscribed hey sudzer Thank you. I appreciate you each and every day. And today is no exception because I know that you guys are going to be awesome and tell me in the comments how pretty these bars are, even though I like to beat myself up about them. Just a little bit. Just a little. I really do appreciate you guys. Thank you for joining me for another round of 365 Days of Soap. I'm out of here for today, but I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.